one, two, one, two. I'll, I'll give you a countdown here. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Joe, DJ Nottis K, and uh, this is the first installment of Fashion Bomb right here on Gully TV. Here, grab this. Uh, let's go through the starter jacket shit first. Okay. All right. got uh, you know, classic starter. <laughs> Miami Heat proven, like I said, that I'm a fan long before LeBron ever played there. And uh, I've always been a big fan of the Big East. Syracuse has always been my team. So when I was in uh, sixth grade, uh, my mom took me to the Erie Sports Store in the Liberty Plaza, in which there was an entire wall of these coats with just about every team. College, it's bro. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was absolutely amazing. But yeah, I, I, I picked Syracuse and I held on to these jackets. They were huge on me when I was a kid. Cause the style back in the '90s was the rock of like way bigger than your actual intended size. I've actually grown into this one quite well. This one's still a little baggy on me, but I still rock them both. They're definitely heavy in my wardrobe. Uh, touching upon what I was saying earlier about early street fashion um, that was heavily influenced by hip-hop uh, doubled down by the shared love and appreciation of athletes and hip-hop rappers and athletes together right uh, you know mix in a lot of the movies that were coming out you know even Boys in the Hood and things like that. I mean, there was such an influence on like what the culture in other parts of the United States were like, what life inside of suburban areas that some of us in the suburbs may not have seen. Right. Um, but one way or another, the starter jacket was the sentinel like rite of passage. If you had your starter coat, like it was kind of that first layer of street cred, you know what I mean? And uh, depending on what teams or um, even, you know, schools that you rocked, like certain ones had, you know, different connotation for what maybe neighborhood you lived yeah, in, right. what gang affiliation you might have had. True. Um, there was a number of things. So, I mean, there, it wasn't also just like the Jordans. Like, it was kind of risky wearing them at that time. You never knew if someone was going to try and take your jacket or take your shoes or something like that. So, right. they've always carried controversy. Um, the Miami Hurricanes one was huge because when Miami was going through their tear of winning in college football, I remember them specifically in the 80s playing against Penn State and dudes right. were coming off the bus in camo and, and whatnot. And that jacket, uh, the starter coat in Miami then, but the two live crew, yeah, uh, you know what I mean, Luther Campbell, and like again, it's just been a, it's a staple in hip hop. Uh, it's been coming around the last couple of years, big time. Uh, I know these go for a good couple hundred dollars a piece in the vintage stores and online and whatnot. Right. But to me, they're priceless. No doubt. What's up with this Tommy Hill man? It's on the top, man. <laughs> Look like it just hopped out of a Wu-Tang video or something. Yeah, like. well, that 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 actually um, the influence of the the all I, the all you need or whatever it is, Method Man, Mary J. Blige joint, all that I need. I'll be there for you. Right. You know that that video with the the Grant Hill Fila's and stuff. You know, I mean, I had a huge inspiration. Uh, I was like, uh, I think a sophomore in high school. It was like 94, 95, yeah, somewhere in there, and. Uh, I got this coat and I've had it ever since. As far um, as a motherfucker, <laughs> it, yo. It's it's laced with uh, polar fleece, so it's you know super warm. It's got the half zip on the side. Uh, you yeah, know. ain't no grabbing that the, off the, the racks. The, the, the coke white, you know, even after the years, you get a little bit of fading up here, but you know that just shows the authenticity over time. Um, but yeah, I know the cats out in New York will be loving this right now. I, right. I know Tommy Hill has been coming back, especially with the vintage appeal. You know what I mean? So this is definitely 90s full effect. I think I had the the jeans with the matching hammer strap on the side. Right. Like a little flag and some Tims. You know, that was, that was standard apparel back then. But 
I don't really wear this coat as much because it's really, really big. And although I dig oversized coats, this is it's just hard for me to wear because it's really, really big. Right. So it's, it's more of a, a collector. It, to me, it's art. Um, you know what I mean? I like to just hang it somewhere at a gallery when I show my paintings and have people look at it. <laughs> right, right. Cause, Artifact. Because I believe it's worth that. Yeah, fly relic. Yeah. Let me see this Parker here, man. This okay. This is one of uh, a bunch of uh, North Face coats that I own. This one is very unique because it's early on North Face before it really was a... A popular brand that was able to be even bought in stores by the general public you know it's the North Face patch right there this was made it's on this side right here for the Transantarctic expedition in 1990 it was made for everybody who was on the expedition as well as the sports anchors from ABC Sports uh, has the flags for all the countries that were represented in the exhibition. That's a bad motherfucker right there, yo. Yeah, and it's intended to be a full length, you know, like down to the knees parka. Um, I, you know, it's got the full upper hood. Yeah, with the bib. And then it's got the front zip pouch, drawstring in the middle. You got the drawstrings at the bottom. Um, I still rock this from time to time. Um, to me, it's priceless. I know it would probably go for at least a thousand plus dollars. I've seen the um, the under jacket that went along with this that I do not have. I've seen those for about eight hundred on eBay. Right. Um, recently, Pharrell has been doing some collaboration stuff with North Face and brought out a very similar style and silhouette uh i have no direct proof but i do believe that it was probably taken from some of the dna from this time Inspired, period yeah uh, and of course the hype beasts you know since you said not to cut you off this time period grab that other one that's a similar color okay because that was a, a popular color way back then because the charlotte hornets had just became an expansion team yeah this and that is, was a uh, very very popular color combination the turquoise and, mm -hmm. the, and the purple this is again uh early 90s wool rich uh this would have been an undercoat uh, fleece intended to be worn under a, a shell of a skiing jacket right um because it was still the early 90s it had the heavy influence still from the 80s so the neon you know colorways uh, this particular kind of style of fleece coats ski jackets became very popular for a while columbia jackets right uh if you will even the brand i love columbia this is taking it out there but the brand varnay varnay france okay they used to have uh, a t-shirt line that was very popular they also had a whole line of windbreakers and pullovers that were in the same style that were uh, the different bright colors it was a, a, a huge trend that was in the early 90s um Again, this is just one of those gems that I've held on to. Uh, I used to wear it, you know, quite frequently, even in college. And I didn't even know it was really anything. Did you know the significance of Woolrich back then? You just knew it was a nice, nice piece of, uh, yeah, winter I garment. Mean, it, it was exactly like I didn't know back then that Woolrich was going to become uh, a more, you know, I guess sought after fashion brand. I just was a kid who liked the jacket. It probably because right. I like the way it looked or something, you know what I mean? It, I don't know where my brain really was, probably not wrapped into fashion then. But this coat, uh, just go to sh that's go that goes to show you got an eye for fashion that you grabbed a Woolrich piece, even just like this. This is another brand, Eddie Bauer. You know, it's still very popular today. This is one of the classic. This coat hasn't changed in, I mean, years. The, it's been it's their timepiece coat. It's every year it's the same coat. Similar to the Woolrich Park. Exactly. Yeah. And then again, Eddie Bauer is known for being just insane quality. You know what I mean? The craftsmanship is durable. I've had this thing for 17, 18 years maybe now. Wow. And, and it's still, when it gets real cold, it's my go-to. Uh, it's super, it's all down, uh, down goose. So it's super.
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the guy. Oh, he's an innovator. Uh, he's out in New York City doing the Kith brand. Uh, they recently just did a huge collaboration project, and they brought back the Air Maestro, for Scott, which was Scotty Pippen's signature shoe. They brought it out in a really ill red and purple colorway. Um, all his silhouettes, all his mashups, you know, I'm not dick rotten or anything. I'm just being real. I, I'm, I'm an old school head, and I just, like, think I can tell a good aesthetic when I see a good aesthetic. And the, the dude's got a really good thing out in New York City going right now. Um, he, he definitely has his niche area of the hype beast movement because there's a lot of people who camp out and wait for his product. And he's doing some pretty cool, innovative things like introducing cereal bars in his store where you can eat breakfast cereals while you're, you know, you're shopping and stuff. So I, I think it's pretty hip. It's definitely got that New York vibe for sure. Yeah, yeah, we... Well, you got Durant's. You know, this was always an understated shoe because this is the shoe he uh, hurt his ankle in. And uh, so a lot of people don't like this this particular model. Um, but I am a huge fan of the Durants. I have these. This is also another low top Durant. Yeah, this is a custom Nike ID edition. So this wasn't available in the general market. This is a, a custom design, yeah. About a month usually. Um, here's another Durant model. These are the Easy Monies. This is another very understated model because this is in that era coming off when he uh, won his MVP but had then become hurt. I believe these are the two shoes that he had hurt. And then LeBron, you know, LeBron has couple different you know variations this is a nike id version i actually there's a funny story about this my my grandfather played in the nfl and was an all-american football player at purdue university and purdue university's colors are gold black and gray and the one year that lebron james playing for the miami heat lost to the san antonio spurs ironically manu ginobili was wearing the uh, LeBron shoe at the time and he was wearing it in a player edition colorway that was silver black and gold so I Nike ID'd these after my grandfather at Purdue but also because of Mano Ginobili's uh, or Ginobili's player edition shoe so I own a pair of LeBron's ironically to when the Spurs beat LeBron so kind of weird twist to no, those aren't the Southpies shoes. These are actually were called the What Does. This is um, they're a, like a mashup of all the different. Both of them are different. I think they retail when they first came out. Uh, let's see if my box is still over here. I mean, I, I, they were easily 250. I think I paid 300, three and a quarter when they first came out. I think, yeah, I definitely paid three and a quarter for these. I paid a little bit more. I, I'm not gonna lie, I paid over retail, but I really wanted them with this. Just because they fire, yeah, exactly. I don't know what they would resell. Yeah, and the, ironically, this this specific year and model of the shoe did not do really over overly well. But when this colorway came, this was the this was the one that everybody wanted because it it had pieces of all the different signature shoes over the years that were all put together. I didn't. I, I have, I've had. I, that ain't my name all the time. I like quarter, quarter, quarter cuts of both 
Yeah, I agree. Like this is the the ten high. This is the the elite. This was uh the yeah it's the, when he was done like a cartoon, like a superhero. It was a campaign. Him and Kobe and I've I believe Durant. They were all done like cartoon characters. Like I don't know something about the superheroes or something. I don't even know. But yeah, the, but then like we were talking about highs and lows. Like this is the high. You know, but then you get into like the low top. You know, I like the lows. The lows are easier to wear. The, the, these are LeBron ten uh, Easters. Uh, I've always been a fan of the gum sole. LeBron. You know, but as far as who has the two guys, this is fun. I don't know whether it's your size, size, <laughs> shoe shooting wear, what. They look pretty good. I, I have. Thank you. I, I'm very selective about LeBron's. I can't just buy them off the rip. You know, I got to be real super selective. Again, I kind of just keep it in line with, you know, what my personal favorites are. You know, like these have always been special to me, the Jordan 5. You know, I mean, these came back out this past year, so I had to get a pair. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, a lot of people, when they were buying this shoe, they were buying it on hype and like, oh, I got to get this. And I don't think they realized, you know, to someone like me or you who, who came around and played in this or, you know, had this when we were a child or didn't have it and wanted it. And remember when people were getting shot and killed for these shoes, you know, in the original, I mean, you know, whether it's the Jordan sneaker or starter coats, you know, back in the day, like, there was an associative value to wearing clothes like that. And it came from a certain type of culture. And to be able to wear that uh, style and to have that uh, presence, you know what I mean, was kind of like earning earning your stripes and cutting your teeth and being accepted uh, amongst the culture. And it was a cultural phenomenon that was happening both with music with art, with fashion, culture, hip hop was coming of age, and uh, I don't know, being an athlete, <laughs> being uh, a fan of hip hop, and just being a kid who was in high school in like 93, 94, you know, junior, senior year, gonna be, you know, just figuring everything out. Like, I was impressionable, and it's just carried with me my whole life. And so, like, I never gave up on a lot of the stuff that I loved. And ironically, back in 2017, now everything's come full circle, and everybody wants it again. And I just have all the stuff that I have that's just been sitting on my shelves for years, and then thinking I'm crazy because I still rock this old shit. It's a little bit weird, and uh, I i mean, I'm not going to say that I haven't, you know, pursued. pursued things on release dates myself, because I've, you know, I guess if you want things in today's day and age, you just got to play the game, but man, it's really, really changed, and it's really mind-boggling. Uh, I remember being able to get the, the Sunday Circular and open it up for the Erie Sports Store, and they'd have like three pair of Jordans and some forces and some Barclays and a pair of pennies and you could just see which ones and they would believe it or not even go on sale. Yeah.